been reading a little bit the story of Esther. How long has it been since you read the story of Esther? You probably remember names like Mordecai, obviously Esther, King Ahasuerus, I hope I said that right, the Jews. The story is a remarkable story, and I urge you to go back. It probably will, would only take you about 40, 45 minutes to read the entire book. There's not that many chapters. But the story really, really involves some things I think we can consider as we're here at the table. You see, King Ahasuerus was a powerful man, and Esther was the queen. Esther was a Jew. Mordecai, family of Esther, they realized that there was a plot to kill all of the Jews. And they were, in essence, condemned by Ahasuerus's right-hand man, Haman. That's another name to consider. Now, as the story pans out, things are completely reversed, ultimately by the hand of God himself. And things that you never thought would take place or never thought would happen actually happened. Esther had to gain favor from King Ahasuerus. He had to extend the scepter so that she could petition him and have a request made to, in essence, save the Jews, a condemned people. And they were condemned by an edict brought forth by Haman, the right-hand man of the king himself. Please go back and read the story. You will see things you probably haven't seen before. And doesn't that always happen when you go back to read a story again? Isn't that the growth and faith of, of, of ourselves in the Lord? That's what happens when we read the Bible over and over and over. You see things you've never seen before. I love that story. And I love when finally things turn around and the salvation comes by the edict of the man who was to be condemned first and foremost, Mordecai himself. In Esther chapter 8, Mordecai was to bring this message. He was to be the courier that would declare the salvation of the Jews who were to be condemned. In verse 15 of chapter 8, then Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal robes, blue and white, with a large crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Susa shouted and rejoiced. They had just received message with the king's insignia ring. They were not to be condemned. They were not to be destroyed according to what Haman wanted and his wishes. Things had been switched. They were to be saved. Verse 16. For the Jews, there was light, there was gladness, there was joy, and there was honor. We come to this table, and there's a sense in which, in, in which you feel a bit condemned. You realize your sins. You realize that there's no hope, there's no light, there's no gladness, there's no joy, and there's no honor. But Jesus, having died for our sins, gives the declaration of all those things, knowing that those things can be put aside. The condemnation is no longer there because he died for your sins. For everyone who ever has been, everyone who ever will be, there is now salvation. That process has been reversed. There is hope. There is light. We are the couriers, in essence, the Mordecais of faith. In Matthew chapter 28, I want you to consider what Jesus said just before he ascended to his disciples. And it's the same message that we carry. This is our hub, if you will, our distribution center, where we come to gain strength and confidence. And we come to have the truth reminded in our minds and in our hearts to take that to the people, to be the Mordecais of the world. Before Jesus ascended, he said, all authority has been given unto me on heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them. This is the message. Teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. You see, Jesus taught his disciples, and through his word, he teaches us to teach this gospel message, this message of salvation. And when we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we are literally from our distribution center giving that declaration to one another here 
and to everyone that we come across in the world. We are the Mordecais, the couriers. We teach the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. For in that message, there is light. There is hope. There's all the things that those Jews had when they heard that message from Mordecai in that time. Okay, let's bow our heads and give thanks for the bread. Oh Lord, we're thankful for this table. We're thankful for this bread and this cup. It represents light, gladness, joy, and honor. The same kind that your people have always experienced. We experience that specifically through Jesus Christ, the giver of light and gladness and joy and honor, the giver of the good news, the best news, that he died for our sins and saved us. We have salvation through him, and we are so thankful for that. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this bread. Help us to focus on all the things that he has done for us. Help us to focus on that salvation that he granted. We ask these things through his name. Amen.